Does AOC know what a crime is, even when one is described to her? There was some interesting uh, exchange from that Hunter Biden hearing yesterday. You might remember the one where Vladimir Putin made an appearance. <laughs> uh, someone, a Democratic member of congressman, was dressed in a Putin mask. But that's not what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about Tony Bobulinski's grilling by AOC. See what you made of it. Let's play it. Did you deal? witness the what? president commit it's, it's, a crime? Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime do you uh, have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? It is simple. You name the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, <laughs> RICO and conspiracy. What is it? What is Farah. what is the crime, sir? You, you, Specifically. You, just, wait, you keep up. You asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No. RICO, you're obviously not familiar with. Corruption Excuse statutes. Excuse me, sir. Excuse Farah. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. RICO is not a crime. It is a category. What I is don't know. the, it's the category of crimes that you're then charged? You under have charges. A long hundred. You have charges, statute. sir. Yeah. Please you want me to name, name the exact statute sir? under RICO. Yes. I'll, well, it's funny in this committee room. Everyone's not here. There's over eight. All right, sir. I reclaim my lawyers time. Lawyers that I went reclaim to law my school. Time. I reclaim my time. All right, okay. is Rico a, a crime? A lot of, a lot of blowback. Yeah, there. and it seems well deserved. Look, it seems like what she was going after is a gotcha moment where she was attempting to pin him down on a specific crime that can be tied to Joe Biden. As you know from our coverage, that kind of you know red, red, red herring, uh, smoking gun rather, hasn't quite materialized for Republicans, and it's ground this investigation kind of to a halt. But you know what they always say, don't ask a question on cross that you don't already know the answer to. She opened herself up to uh, the, the witness saying, yes, there was a crime and it was Rico and she seemed almost flustered and her only retort was, well, that's not a crime. Now that's a surprise to everyone who's been watching Donald Trump getting charged with Rico down in the Georgia Rico. case. Right. You know, and so there are a lot of comments that say, okay, well, this this is this is new. Somebody better tell Fonnie Willis that Rico, in fact, isn't a crime. Now, of course, yeah, he used Tinder just... to get a hold of her. <laughs> Stop, Robbie. So, you know, like we've talked about Rico in and of itself and whether or not it is a law that allows um, the police to have too much latitude, frankly, prosecutors to have too much latitude. The Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act um, it was intended to help get members of the mob who you couldn't necessarily tie to a specific crime because they were too high up the ladder, uh, right. as it were, but were directing some of the, the crime that was happening on the ground and the violence that was happening on the ground. So a separate question is whether or not Babaluski can actually demonstrate that there was a RICO crime that, crime that Joe Biden is tied to, but certainly she did give him a kind of a moment that did not look good for her and her case. Right, because it wasn't vague what he was accusing him of. Right. The part for debate is whether the fact that Joe Biden was in the room right. or participated in phone calls or was at the dinner uh, means that he was complicit in this underlying criminal activity. And, you know, that needs to be borne out. But but what he is being considered by people who find it plausible to have done is not unclear. Right. It's it, it is it is corruption. Corruption right. is illegal for public officials. Right. And uh, she I think she expected. Yeah, she expected to get a gotcha on him for that. But it totally backfired. Your question was too broad. It wasn't. Is there a crime? It's describe right. the crime. And right. if it's what he's described in the past, I think, like you said, there's a really important questions about whether or not that actually constitutes something that arises to the level of impeachment. So it might be helpful to read from his written statement that he made prior to his testimony yesterday. He said, I wanted to be crystal clear from my direct personal experience and what I have subsequently come to learn. It is clear to me that Joe Biden was the brand being sold by the Biden family. His family's foreign influence peddling operation from China to Ukraine and elsewhere sold out to foreign actors who were seeking to gain influence and access to Joe Biden and the United States government. He says Joe Biden was more than a participant in and beneficiary of his family's business. He was an active, aware enabler who met with business associates such as myself to further the business, despite being buffered by a complex scheme to maintain plausible deniability. But the new Democratic point of view is that all of this is illegitimate because that one other guy 
met with Russian intelligence. Not this guy. <laughs> Sure, but I, I don't think that's the limit of the Democrats' are the Democrats' that's argument. the one they're going. I mean, they wore a Putin mask to the here. Sure, the that guy did. But the Democrats' <laughs> argument has been, you have an obligation to prove the crime. And I don't well, know that— true. And they, I, they and, do. Sure. Yeah, and I don't know sure. that saying—just saying that the brand— I, Look, to me personally, the question of whether or not Hunter Biden's behavior and holding out his father as an inducement to people contracting with him in these business deals that clearly have no relationship to his actual experience or, or value add to the companies is not in dispute. That seems to be obviously what happened. But the hard part is that Hunter Biden isn't president of the United States of America and throwing Hunter Biden in jail doesn't really do anything for anybody. It's a political question as to whether or not people who are opposed to Joe Biden's politics because right. they're Republicans can get him out of office. And so you can hear in um, Babalewski, Babalewski's testimony that he's trying to say- What a fun name. I was in the room. <laughs> I was in the room. I feel like his, uh, you know, I, I am the subject upon which Joe Biden operated and holding himself out as the brand. I just don't know, however, that that is enough. Mm -hmm. This kind of case is notoriously difficult to prove. That's why they kind of came up with Rico in the first instance, because saying that Tony Soprano somewhere ordered this when he's sitting in his house in New Jersey feeding the ducks doesn't necessarily fly when it comes to the kind of evidence that you need for court. Especially because a lot of the most, I think, suspicious um, activities surrounding this case, frankly, have to do with how various law enforcement uh, agencies and prosecutors handled Hunter Biden, including, of course, the sweetheart deal, going mm -hmm. after him on guns and drugs, and that, and then allowing a kind of narrative to be about, oh, how dare we criminalize this poor, suffering substance abuser when, you know, gratuitous pictures of him with hookers and drugs aside, the real, which is just salacious, but the real public interest is in, uh, was a, a greater investigation into what he was doing stymied or going to be stymied if that deal was accepted where he pleads guilty to things that are not frankly of public significance in terms of some of this other stuff. Yeah, and, and to bring this back to AOC just a little bit, I mean, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald made the point that he actually tied me into this because I had made, as part of one of my um, podcast episodes for my own show last week, a montage talking about how AOC once was so vocal about being anti-corruption and how she was wanted to be a disruptor in the Democratic Party and, and be against uh, so many of the things that, even if they are not provable crimes against Joe Biden, are being suggested by his behavior here. And now she's on the exact opposite of this. So he says the last week, Bri Bri, Bri Joy put together a 90 second video montage showing how AOC spent the first two years of her career vowing to subvert and disrupt the Dem party. Now she's one of uh, one of the most loyal party members spending her day defending Hunter Biden's sleazy deals in Ukraine. And it is difficult not to read this as a wild diversion from the mm. kinds of activities that the Justice Democrats sent her to Congress to engage with. You know, it doesn't, it, it seems like a I mean, kind she of- She has dutifully fallen in line in terms of defending Joe Biden from all, from all sides. Yes, and this this feels like a choice. You know, there are many people who could and have engaged in this, in this sort of questioning putting your face on this of all of the issues that are before Congress right now, it doesn't help her public image with the left who have been pretty disgruntled, feeling like they did not get what they paid for when they supported her campaign, knocked doors, donated money, hosted her on various left media outlets, and really fought for her to join Congress back in 2018, when the hope was that the presence of more progressive-minded people could shift the caucus to the left. It appears increasingly like the opposite has happened, at they least were in some shifted. instances. They yeah. were shifted to the yeah. right or to the more, to the establishment. To the center, yeah. to the, the dreadful center. <laughs> the dreadful center. Not a place you will find either of us. <laughs> more rising right after this.